race to the top grants are used by the states to institute common core curriculum. Once those funds are used, who pays the bill? Common Core was the brainchild of a fellow named E.D. Hirsch. In a nutshell, every school in the United States will be teaching the very same subject matter in the very same way at the very same time. All learning is based on language arts as a mean of teach and learn all subject matter. Reading, writing, history, science, geography, and art history. And you may think that's pretty good, especially for the military families when they move schools a lot. A look at the curriculum, as I said, is fairly impressive. In my opinion, it is too politically correct and too revisionist. You probably all read recently the Florida State Representative who reviewed the world history book used in the AP history class that referenced Muhammad and his armies taking over Medina and stated that the people happily accepted Islam as their way of life. I left out the tens of thousands of Jews and non-Christians, or Jews and non-believers that were massacred by Muhammad's armies. The book also indicates that Jesus proclaimed himself to be the Messiah, while stating as a fact that Muhammad is a prophet. Mm -hmm. The students are also given lessons in the five pillars of Islam. Oregon has signed on to Common Core, according to the public Portland Public School website, pre-K through 12 is on track to fully implement Common Core by the end of the 2014-15 school year. However, due to budget cuts, Portland Public School does not have central staff dedicated to support the following areas, PE and health, arts and music, world languages, social studies. Portland Public School uses a Common Core curriculum. They'll be most likely teaching your first grader the history of world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And chances are your first grader will view the anti-capitalist video, The Story of Stuff. Your second grader will learn about Hinduism, Buddhism, and examine Islam in further detail. By fourth grade history, they will include the Middle Ages and developments of the Christian church, the spread of Islam, and will view, most likely, or excuse me, and including the holy wars and the five pillars of Islam. Sixth graders will study the growing gaps between the social classes, the Israelis' images of two nations of the rich and the poor. They'll study socialism and Marxism and class struggle communism. I'm not saying that those shouldn't be taught, but my concern is who is teaching it, what textbook are they using, and what will be the takeaway of your middle schooler or sixth grader? A love for a republic's governmental style or bent toward another system? Your middle schooler's math book includes story problems about sweatshops, and unfair labor practices, <coughs> social justice math. Common Core does not recommend accelerating students into high school mathematics until ninth grade. No algebra one before high school. Common Core maths will build progressively without significant repetition. Reading the overview of the math instruction on the Portland Public School curricula seem to be a little contradictory. It says they will offer high school level math to middle grades, and they will at the same time adhere to common core standards. As I mentioned, school choice in the former vouchers, private school, homeschool, or Christian school is probably also going to be de facto teaching to the common core standard. So, I think I probably have time. I, I, have, I, I do have to take time. We have good friends, Maria and Dushan. They came from Romania with their three daughters in the early 1980s. Their daughters were very bright, but they were not going to be allowed to attend high school. They were allowed to leave Romania, but they had to leave all their possessions, their property, and their money behind. 
in the 25 or so years that they've been in the United States, the girls excel in school. One is an attorney in Atlanta. One is a critical care nurse at OHSU and has an adult foster care home. The other daughter lives in West Lynn and has an adult foster care home. My friends Maria and Dushan operate an adult foster care home and are preparing to retire in the next year and sell their business and their property. Where I was going with this story is in the years that I have known Maria and Dushan, Dushan keeps telling me, Bonnie, you must be very careful of where this government is going, where it is taking you. We fled a government such as I see beginning here. I think of Dushan and Maria and their girls every time I read an article about Common Core. I don't know if I have a silver bullet, but I do know that there is a growing concern about Common Core. And I think we need to contest it, not in the media, but perhaps in a small sphere of the political arena. Everyone knows about it, everyone talks about it, but nobody to date has been held accountable for sure with what's going on. I think Common Core is a scandal, and I think both sides of the political spectrum are equally as guilty. And maybe they have just been sold a bill of goods, I don't know. But we need to change the political climate where the political power comes from. And when we can do that, as, Cha as Chairman Mao says, political power comes out of the barrel of a gun. I don't think that's where we want to be headed. <clears throat> or as they have proven in the United States over the past century, political power comes from community organizing. And it doesn't matter what your political views are, what issue you support or oppose, Organizing works and it is successful. We need to realize that we have a small sphere of influence and you have to influence the sphere that you find yourself in. You have to start local. You need to start with your school boards. And then you can work on your city council and your county commissioners or whatever local politicians reside in your area or your community. It's hard to change things from the top down and while it's slower, it change works best from the bottom up. School boards have a lot of power. They have the power of your pocketbook. School districts can raise your taxes. So what we need to do possibly is find out how many voters are in your district. How do you reach those voters? Do you knock on doors? Do you make flowers, flyers to hang out? Do you make hand out? Do you make yard signs? School boards can put the pressure on the state. This state, in turn, can put the pressure on Washington. You need to remember that school board races are run, won by as little as two or three votes. One vote makes all the difference. So I guess if I have a takeaway, it might be join your PTA or whatever parent group is in your school district. You don't have to be a parent join those groups. You can volunteer at your school. You can be the grandparent that goes in to read to the first graders. You can volunteer in the library. You need to find some common ground with those folks. You have to be a presence. You have to be non-confrontational. And amazingly enough, you will find some common ground with folks that you never thought you might have common ground with. I understand that the school board unions, some of them are not liking Common Core right now. I don't know if they feel threatened, but perhaps there may be some common ground to work with the unions to see if Common Core can be taken out of the schools and more local control be allowed back into the schools. Remember, the U.S. Constitution does not allow the federal government to dictate what is legally and legitimately the state's right. And more importantly, it's the community's right. There's probably a short window of opportunity to take back the educational system and all the more reason to vet these school board members that may be running in your local district.